And it's very important when doing a problem like this, ladies and gentlemen, that we have covered we have covered how to graph something in, ver in standard form. And if you remember, standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, right? And when we are graphing in standard form, basically what we did, which I'll go over and we'll go over the process again, but just a kind of a quick summary, the process was finding the axis of symmetry, which was x equals b divided by 2, right, 2 times a. Then once you found the axis of symmetry, you plug that in to find the vertex. Then you found two points to the left and to the right. Um, if we're able to take this equation, though, and write this in vertex form, then there's kind of a lot, lot less math that we really have to do. Because when it's in vertex form, we know that the axis symmetry is just h equals k. We know the vertex is just h comma k. And then if we just need to fight, if, if a is equal to 1, then we just graph, it, graph the parent graph at our new vertex. And if a is not equal to 1, though, then we will have to use a table of values. So I'll go over all that, but I just wanted to kind of review with you some of the benefits of sometimes graphing in vertex form compared to standard form. There's nothing wrong, though, with graphing in standard form. And I'll show you when it's going to be probably more beneficial to graph in standard form than it will to convert it or to graph it in vertex form. But the main important thing I want you to do, what we're going to learn how to do, is rewrite this from standard form to vertex form. Now, what I want you guys to understand is the problems that we did at the beginning of class period, those were perfect square trinomials, correct? You guys remember that? Now, when we did perfect square trinomials, do you remember the last number was always a square number? Is this a perfect square trinomial? No, no it's not, right? But if I, am going to, if I am going to rewrite this as a perfect square trinomial, I am going to have to use this as a binomial. This is a binomial squared, which, if you were to multiply this out, would create a perfect square trinomial. So to get this to be a binomial squared, I have to have a perfect square trinomial. This is not a perfect square trinomial. So to rewrite this, so what I need to do is I need to create a perfect square trinomial. I need to create a perfect square trinomial. It's not a perfect square trinomial. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put parentheses around the first two terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to create a perfect square trinomial. So if you don't have one, you're going to have to create one. So we put, two parentheses, we put parentheses around the first two terms. That's step number one. Step number two is we're going to take b divided by 2 and square it. In this case, I'm going to have 8 divided by 2 squared, which is 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. Now, I'm going to take that 16 and add it inside the parentheses. Okay. Now, by adding this tiara inside the parentheses, what you guys can see, is this a perfect square trinomial? Yeah. yeah. Can I factor it like I did at the beginning of class? Right? Do you guys see that? This can quickly be factored using um, the perfect square trinomial factoring technique. Now, since I added 16 inside the parentheses, I'm going to have to subtract 16 outside the parentheses. And this is very, very important for you guys to understand. Because if you, have an, if you have an equation, let's say 4 equals 4, well, if you add 1 onto one side of the equation, you can't just add 1 and say that the equation is still equal. You now have to subtract 1. So even though, yes, I'm adding 16 inside the parentheses, if I add 16 on the right side of the equal sign, I'm going to also have to subtract 16. So the important thing, ladies and gentlemen, what we have done, I have not mathematically done anything to change. All I have simply done is I grouped the first two terms. I took b divided by 2 squared to give me 16. I added 16 and subtracted 16 into the equation. The equation is still exactly the same. All I did was add 16 and subtract 16. But again, the whole purpose of why add 16, what is so important? That creates a perfect square trinomial. And just like we did those three problems at the beginning of class, we can factor this. This factor, does anybody know what binomial squared this would be? 
x plus 4 squared. It's really x plus 4 times x plus 4. Or y equals x plus 4 squared. 10 minus 6 is, or 10 minus 16 is negative 6. Now, if we're going to go ahead and graph this, if we're going to go ahead and graph this, my vertex is at hk, if you guys remember, h comma k, which is negative 4, negative 6. So I'll go over negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm at negative 4, negative 6. And um, then I notice that my a is equal to 1, right? There's no dilation of the graph. So therefore, I can just apply what the parent graph is, which is over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. Over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 4. And then done. If you guys remember from last class period, if we have